Oh, look, a CSV file. Let's open it up. So here's what it looks like inside of Excel. This is your standard CSV file. You're going to find all your data sets everywhere come in this format most of the time. Up here at the top, though, we got this data loss warning. Some features might be lost if you save this in the CSV format. And, and comma delimited, that's just another way of saying that the commas in the file are the thing that's delimiting the values into these separate columns. Let me show you what I mean. Look at the raw data here. We can open this in a notepad, and we can see that it's quite literally just a bunch of text separated by commas. So every time Excel sees one of those commas, it's throwing a column in there and it's using this top row for the headers. And then every subsequent row thereafter is going to be just another row of data. All right. So let's open this back up in Excel and check out what it means by data loss. So when we're in Excel, we can go ahead and use our standard functions over here and we can average things and some things, nothing fancy, but it'll give us those values, right? And then we could even go over here, turn this into a table, make some stuff bold, change the color, whatever. And I'm going to click Control S, save. I'm going to X out of there. And then as I load this back up, huh, all the formatting has gone. Well, that's because this is literally just those text values separated by commas. It, it can't store data like a uh, styling. It can't store data like the tables, like the the functions and the formulas, these are all turned into just values now. So it'll save the values, but not the actual functions that got them. Okay, so what formats do we need to save this as? I'm going to go back over here, turn this back into a table. We'll just put one thing there. So we got this formula calculating the sum of three salaries. And then my favorite shortcut, maybe not my favorite, it's one of my most used, is F12. This brings up this old school save as menu, which I prefer using a lot of the time. I, OneDrive's great and I'll use it for some circumstances, but I like to save stuff on my desktop still. Call me old school, but that's what I end up doing a lot of the time. This gets me to this menu, the save as, and then we can save as type. We've got all these gazillion types. If you want me to do a video about some of these more obscure types, let me know in the comments below. The most common things we're going to be working with, though, are just this regular S, excuse me, XLSX. That's your standard issue Excel workbook as of today. And if we save that, now that warning up there goes away. This is a regular workbook. Oh, the other thing that the SCV or the, excuse me, CSV file won't save is separate sheets. So if I had another sheet over here, it would only save the sheet that I'm pressing save as on. Okay, so this handles almost all of our use cases, this XLSX. But so if we're writing code in here and VBA, if we're doing macros and stuff like that, we are going to actually have to save it as a different type. It's right here underneath the Excel workbook. It's the macro enabled workbook. So we'll select that if we need to save our VBA code inside of our spreadsheet. Fundamentally, nothing will change if we're not using VBA. It'll look just the same as if we were. And here it is right here. I actually don't know the answer to this. So let's check out the file sizes. So the file size of this, 73 kilobytes. The file size of this, 73.6. So it will be slightly larger file size because it's going to have some extra data in there. Even though I didn't write anything or change anything in this file, I guess it's got extra room to compute that VBA code. You'll also see this neat little uh, exclamation mark to the right corner. This little uh, icon changes when it's that XLSM file. Hope that's helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below and hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Have a great one and goodbye.